Here we're going to talk about units of measurement of volume. In chemistry, of course, we deal a lot with volume. And again, the standard units for volume is a cubic meter. Of course, a meter is about this big. So if you have a big cube, one meter by one meter by one meter, here I kind of drew a cubic meter on the board. It's a lot of volume, and uh, that is equivalent to 1,000 liters. Now, we don't deal much with cubic meters in chemistry. We tend to deal with smaller volumes. So we have what we call a decimeter. Deci means one one tenth. So we take a cube that has sides equal to 10 centimeters, which is one tenth of a meter. So 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Now we have a cubic decimeter. And of course, as you can see, since this is one tenth the length of a, of a meter, and this is one tenth the length of a meter, and this is one tenth the length of a meter, a cubic decimeter is one one thousand of a cubic meter. So here we can see that if we multiply 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, we get a cubic decimeter or we get one liter. And a liter is a common unit of volume in chemistry. Now, even smaller unit for volume is a cubic centimeter. So if you take, again, a cubic decimeter and then go to just one tenth the length in each side and we cube that, so we have one centimeter times one centimeter times one centimeter, we now have a cubic centimeter, which is one one thousand of a liter, which is also known as a milliliter. Milli stands for one one thousand. So those are very common units in chemistry. Usually we deal with flax or barrettes or something like that, where we measure things in terms of cubic centimeters. And then, just in case, uh, a gallon, uh, definitely what we use here in the United States, is 3.785 liters to get that commonality between the English units and the metric units. I, we also have the, what we call the imperial gallon, which is no longer used, I believe, which is uh, over four liters, I think something like four and a half liters or so. All right, so now at least you have a kind of a perspective of how we deal with volume. Most of the time we'll be dealing with milliliters, cubic centimeters, or sometimes we'll be dealing with liters. And so now you know the equivalence between the standard unit of cubic meters and these other units of volume. And that's what we do in chemistry.